Yes, shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom, one, family. Shalom, one. Shalom, one. Pray all is well. We are doing a lesson today on how to fast. Last week we did it on how to pray. All right. So today we're touching on how to fast and the importance of fasting. All right, we're going to start off with Isaiah 58 and 5. Let me share this screen. Uh, to the people on the Zoom, can y'all see my screen? You sharing the screen? Can everybody see the screen? Let us know, please. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. What's, what, what's the verse? Now? Isaiah 58 and 5. Isaiah chapter 58. We're going to start at verse 5. Isaiah 58. We're starting at verse 5. Salah. Uh, Y'all can write by it all. Fasting is a day a man afflicts his soul. Say the, the meaning of fasting or the meaning of fasting. Repeat it one more time. Mark. Um, I got a day. Excuse me. Fasting is a day a man afflicts his soul. Man or woman, excuse me, afflicts their soul. Or you can put a definition of fasting, basically, meaning of fasting. However, y'all would like to have it up in y'all notes. Affliction of the soul. Because y'all understand y'all becoming scribes by doing these things too, right? Okay. Afflicts his soul. Definitely becoming uh, mm -hmm. wise men and women. Definitely. Uh, you know, letting the spirit come in and do its thing. All right. All right. We in Isaiah 58 and verse 5. And it reads, Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul. Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes unto him? Will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Right. So is this what you call a fast? But yeah, back in the day they would. They would take off, especially even the kings, even royalty, you'll take off your goodly garments, put on a, a sackcloth, they'll put ashes on their head. Just a show of what? What is it to show? Humbleness, Humbleness humility, meekness, lowliness. Lowliness. There you Next go. question. Do we still put on sackcloth and stuff? It's not sackcloth, but we put just maybe regular clothes on. Do we? Or, or should we dress regular like we always would dress? Yeah. And that's what he's asking right here in this in this passage right here. He's asking him, is is the fast just to put ashes under yourself or just to put sackcloth on? Like, nah, that's not even an acceptable phase. You should be still presenting yourself like you would always do mm -hmm. and do it secretly, like how he tell us to do it secretly. Mm -hmm. Not appear as you fasting. You supposed to do it secretly and you get blessed openly. Wow. Yeah. Supposed to do your hair, don't let you you supposed to um I don't know if I got it down. I gotta I can't remember. But you're not supposed to look or appear as if you are fast. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not supposed to have people, uh, oh, man, what's wrong with you? And telling everybody you're fasting. That's not a proper fast. That's something between, is the fast between you and the rest of the people around, or is it between you and the Most High? In Christ. It's between you, Most High, and Christ. So it's not, I don't fast and, and try to get no glory, because he's like, man, I fast every day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nah, we ain't, we ain't looking for that. We're looking for what you get from connecting to the most high in Christ. That's what you need. Can we read verse six out? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would love to. All right, verse six. 
Is it is not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness and to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that he break every yoke? Right. So if he tell me, what is it for? Like we said, we was quoting on, we was talking about Matthew, um, I believe it's chapter six, where he say, don't, don't appear to fast. That's what I what it's about. It's about to loose the bands of wickedness, mm -hmm. to undo heavy burdens, mm -hmm. and to let the oppressed go free. And just think about it. You remember when the uh, disciples came to that one person that nobody could help, right? What he told them, fasting and prayer. Not just prayer. Sometimes you gotta you gotta prepare yourself for some of these spiritual battles. You can't think that every battle the same because every spirit not not the same. You know, you might be addiction. Addiction is a heavy spirit. You can't beat most people can't beat addiction in a day. No, you gotta have constant fasting and prayer. So you just understand that it's different levels to things we're dealing with. We're dealing with uh, wickedness in high places. So it depends on what you're going through. Some people might, some people always ask me, well, how you stop just smoking cigarettes, cold turkey? Well, I prayed about it and then most of blessed me with that. Other people can't achieve that, but that's a thing that other people could do that I can't do. So it's just, you know, that's why we're here to help each other, right? That's all you wanted to read, uh, verse six on that? Now let's read, uh, yeah, that's all, that's it. I also wanted to touch on uh, same thing with I talking about, about the addiction. You also being oppressed by addiction too. You understand yeah. that, so that's why he's saying you fast on it, and it says it up in the passage. Oh, 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 and to let the oppressed go free. Mm -hmm. So you oppressed with this addiction, you need to fast it off of yourself so you can go free from this bondage. Other ways, when we was always in captivity, we had to pray to get out of there. We're gonna go into that too once we keep going too. I ain't gonna go jump a little ahead. All right, we're gonna go to um just to just to uh, keep on. Um, what would I say? Iterate? I'm not yeah, iterate. No, um, well, not reiterate, but to add more to to the yeah. what we already presented. Oh, Man, geez. you know I don't be good with the words. Excuse me, y'all. Excuse me. But well, let's go to Matthew. <laughs> yeah, let's go to Matthew nine, fourteen through fifteen. So we just further proving this point. That's all we're gonna be doing. Gonna so be one, you afflicting your soul, and you begin closer to who? All right, and we're going to prove that with Matthew 9, 14 through 15 by what he says right here. Oh, praise you. When you get that, please, Salaya. 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 We are going to somebody quick draw. Cold with it. I love it. Yeah. All right. Oh, I made a double oh. Matthew 9, 14 and 15. <laughs> 14 and 15. I'm there, bro. And we just, we just showing you. He's about to give it to you directly from the man himself, the only Lord and Savior. He talked about it, all right? So let's see what he had to say uh, pertaining to fasting. All right, Matthew 9, verse 14. Then came to him, because right now he's walking, and you got two sets of people. You got the, the, the disciples that's with um, Christ, or apostles, or which kind of prophets. And you also got people that's following John the Baptist. Disciples of John. Disciples, of, yeah. So you, yeah, they call themselves the disciples of John. Yeah, so that's what's happening right now. And, and then, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, nah, I was going to say, it's not that these people, they the disciples of John, that's just something you would call yourself. Because John had a following too, you know, just like Christ had a following. But I'm saying that because everybody knew, because John made sure and let his people know. I'm not worthy to lash this man's shoes. Mm -hmm. So the disciples just because they they followed John around and, and, and helped John out. That's all it was. They knew of Christ. So it was a problem going on that the 12 disciples weren't fasting. So right. John's disciples started asking questions like, mm -hmm. why is this? Yeah, so here we go. All right, verse 14. Then came to him the disciples of John saying, why do we, the Pharisees, fast often? Oft, excuse me. Oft, but that mean often. That mean often, though, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Oft, but thy disciples fast not. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, and Yahweh said unto them, can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? Y'all understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
But the days, but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. And then shall they fast. So we just we just read something very important, right? He say, can they mourn? So now we got a new understanding of what fasting is. Fasting is also a physical mourning. Not mourning like good morning, but mourning. When you show that yourself that you, what? Whole, it's wholehearted. You're doing it for real. You're serious. You're really, really sad, depressed, right? So how you mourn? How they gonna mourn when I'm already here? Yeah. Now, what's the purpose of that? Because the disciples knew that if they was dealing with something, we gotta, we have to pray and fast to communicate with Christ. They could go, they could wait till you come outside. Cause they was right there. Mm -hmm. They just gotta wait till the morning come or in the middle of the night. Think about when they was on the boat and, it, and the storm came. Mm -hmm. And they was like, all they had to do was wake them up. We on the boat, we gotta pray and cry. Mm -hmm. They just had to, hey man, uh, the, the storm going on. And he like, oh man, y'all ain't got no faith. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> So y'all <laughs> should have just told the storm to get out of here. Yeah, I'm right here with y'all. <laughs> like, see, but that's the importance of it. Mm. So fasting is also a state of mourning mm -hmm. for communication with Christ. Remember, he mediator. We did say earlier, fasting is to deal with the most high, but it's also you fast to get a clear communication with Christ. Mm -hmm. He always mediates. Mm -hmm. He passed your he passed your prayers or whatever it is. On to the Father. Just like back in the day, when you would go to get them sins cleaned out for you, it was done through the Levites, but also the high priest was the one that was sending up them, uh, them sin offerings. He was your mediator to Christ, then to the Father. But now Christ then took the position of high priest. So now all we have to do is fast and pray. Right? Anything else you want to touch on in there? No, sir. Just like trying to get a loan and get approval. Get a Christ, the ones letting me know if you got any credit or not. You know, you need to do that call back to the bank. Right. You got it right. <laughs> right. Like, he let you. He good, so you go ahead and let him make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. But so you, if you're talking about it from a credit standpoint, what do you got to do to to have good credit? I keep these laws. Keep them laws <laughs> <and all that. laughs> You gotta be obedient. You know, you go to try to like sis, sis put it as credit alone. That's cool. That's a good, that's a good example. Mm -hmm. But if you ain't keeping law statute commandments, <laughs> you trying to win this billion dollar lottery. <laughs> yeah, you put put bought it with a dollar. Yeah, you trying to win this girl. Like, come on, I need to check my numbers. You ain't got the ticket at home. <laughs> and, another thing is, and another thing is, like speaking about the lottery. A billion dollar lottery. Another thing is, he didn't already check your spirit. Like, you gonna cause more harm with that money to mm -hmm. people. So now nah, I don't give it to him mm -hmm. because money destroy people. Yeah, they become boastful, prideful. Yeah, all so kind he, of stuff. So he checking all that. Do you need this? Idolizing they say. Is this gonna help you? Is it gonna help the people around you? Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people don't get them blessings they want. Mm -hmm. You praying for stuff, you just gotta admit that, man. You ain't, he, 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 you ain't ready for it. And we were just talking about that. Provide it. Excuse me. We just talking yeah. about that last week with the praying. That's like a vain prayer to him, to some people. You know, you, you mm -hmm. praying to get blessed with money. I ain't blessed with it yet. So you keep on asking. It's a vain prayer. Because you don't des not you don't deserve it. You're not ready for it. You might right. harm yourself or you're going to harm some other people and stuff. Uh -huh. Right. That's right. And you didn't cause weight. And, and, and he really helped you. Cause you didn't cause way more worse. It's way worse that he give you this and then you way worse. Now you're way farther away from the line. Now he got to try to reel you back in. Mm -hmm. So he just best not give it to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. Now that we didn't learn what is <laughs> fasting for, we're going to go into what things you do and don't do while fasting. I'm going to start off at verse, um, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Chapter 6, we're going to start at verse 16. Chapter Let's 6 back, and family. 16. Like I say, you go right on the side. This would be under the part of how to fast, how, how to fast, 
the first part was what fast and it's for mm-hmm. how to fast and you could put on the side of matthew 6 and 16 hide your fasting that's what you put hide your yeah hide your fasting careful you only doing 16 how far down you going oh i don't know it's on you I, i'm gonna read you have fun. all right Oh, we got to, we got to hit it there. Nah, I'm not no, <laughs> I was just actually you had an idea, but we can go down. Just start reading. All right. Go down to eighteen. All right. So now we're going down to eighteen, everybody. We're gonna go sixteen to eighteen. It's all good. All right, we're in Matthew chapter six, verse sixteen. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Verse sixteen. Moreover, when you fast. Be not as the hypocrite, hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they dis- disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Stop right there. Mm-hmm. So every year when you come, when, when time come around and you walk around with that smudge on your head, you're a hypocrite. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to appear to men to be fasting. We're gonna. I'm going to show you one, one scripture. We're going to go to uh, Colossians 2 and 8 real quick. Right? This is very important. So we're gonna, I'm going to pull it up for everybody. Colossians 2, and we're going to do verse 8. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Now, you want to bring it up? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> All right, we're in Colossians 2 and verse 8. It reads, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. That's Torah, probably. Mm-hmm. That's it. See, it say right here, spoil you through philosophy and vain, vain deceit. deceit. Them people walking around with that smudge on their head, everybody know that's not in the Bible. So where you get it from? It's a man-made tradition. But just pay attention to this man-made tradition. This man-made tradition, they're telling you to do something that go against the Bible. Mm-hmm. Why are we doing things that go against the Bible? I don't know. I don't know. You know, we are not to do things that go against the Bible. So, and I wanted to point that out to everybody because you want to you wanna make sure and pay attention to things like this, right? Don't be a hypocrite. Don't be a hypocrite. Fasting is, is personal. And wouldn't it be, oh, excuse me. No, I would say if you, if you got 20 people that's coming together in a group and saying, hey, Let's do a fast and everybody agree upon it. Okay, them 20 people know you're fasting. But you're not supposed to go into the world, all 20 people, and go, oh, yeah. oh, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Oh, I'm fasting. Nah, now you fast, you didn't, you didn't blow it. Yeah. It's not for those, those reasons. Which one's gonna say, all right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pull this hey, up. Yes, Wait, sir. Right. Check out 18 and 19. All right. We reading down, all right? Uh, okay, okay, y'all read down. Yeah, yeah. He, okay, he, he just went to another verse right quick to just edify. Yeah, I just uh, yeah. Where y'all at? We're in Matthew chapter six and we're reading sixteen through eighteen. We on verse we're seventeen. Verse seventeen, right now. Yeah, nah, but I was I was talking about in Colossians two. Oh, okay then. I bet two eighteen and nineteen. So you read you say read um two and eighteen right? Yeah, yeah, two and eighteen right. and nineteen. Right. Remember, remember he say you, the Lord gonna reward you in openly, right? When we do yes, our sir. thing in secret. Okay, let's see. All right, Colossians two and eighteen, y'all. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into the those things which he had not seen. Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. God, that's a good one. And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increase it 
with the increase of God. Yeah, no man but the guy you your reward. Right. So so by them doing that, they gonna trick you out of your reward. That's exactly what they do. That's what yeah, that's what a devil does. A devil that, 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 that's why I went that's why I went back there. Uh my yeah. bad. No, that's all good. Let's go to uh Matthew. <laughs> Thank you, I for the scriptures. But it make it make plenty of sense. Because Using the using the, the the excuse, I didn't know when you stand in the, <laughs> on Judgment Day that ain't gonna work. No sir, and I ain't even stood on Judgment Day, but I know it's not gonna work. I don't work. First of all, it's not gonna work because you're standing in front of somebody that know you better than you, hmm. so he gonna truly know if you knew and you didn't. But sitting here in Christianity for forty years, and you don't know you're not supposed to be celebrating Christmas and Easter. How do you think that's going to work out for you? Because they're not in the Bible. Lent not in the Bible. Putting the ash, the smush on your head ain't in the Bible. Eating pork ain't in the Bible. You can't read this Bible that many years and not see these things. And then you just write them off. Say stuff like, well, we in the latter days. That was back in the day. I live under grace. That was in the Bible days. Yeah, that, was that ain't going to work. Days. It's not going to work. And I, I, I'm under grace now. Yeah, that's, I that's not going to work. That. You got to take this walk very, very serious because your life depends on it. And when I say your life, I'm not talking about we live, some of us may make it to 40, some of us may make it to 80, maybe even 120, 25. Hmm. But when I say your life, I'm talking about your soul, your eternity. Yeah. Where you going to spend eternity at? Because that's the only thing that matters. Because this little blink of an eye life we get, Cause by the time the, the Lord blinked, you didn't live your whole life. Mm -hmm. It was long to you, wasn't nothing to him because time don't exist where he is. Because he was he was there before time was created. Time came from the creation of the sun. How many times that sun rotated in a year? That's how many how many times that that sun they rotated from the day you was born back to the day you was born. That's how time comes for you. The Lord don't deal with that. He brighter than the sun. Mm -hmm. You don't need time. What did he say? Um, a thousand thousand years is one day to him. Yeah, a so. thousand years. Yeah, a thousand years on Earth is like a day to him. just a day, a day, a day, and you got forty years. We only took years. up a couple of minutes of it. Probably not even a couple of minutes. We took up a couple of seconds. Make, of time. Yeah, you know. a thousand years. So wow. you got to think about it. It's time to make the decision, not for just right now, but forever. Mm -hmm. We make a decision that lasts forever. Because everybody truly believes. People say, oh, they don't believe the Bible. And the Bible not real. But it makes no sense. How the Bible not real? And they telling you about how the Romans did this in the in the in BC time. And, and this and that. And they talk about this. Oh, but it ain't real. Come on, man. It's real. It's real. God real. One true living God real. These other guards are just wood and stone. Wood and stone. Right. All right, Matthew 6 and 17. Again, you can put hide your fasting on up. But verse 17. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face. So what do you mean? Anoint thy head, wash thy face. Warm yourself. Warm yourself. Take a bath. Show your perfume. Put on your cologne, whatever, and stuff like that. Make yourself be the same way. Verse 18. That thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. For real. Right. So that fast is supposed to be open or supposed to be secret? Secret. 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 So, so don't. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna show one more. Go okay. ahead. I'm gonna just show. And I know we keep looking at this one, but it's a very important scripture. I'm gonna go to Romans. Six. 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 Oh no. 
Yeah, you can read this one too. Though. 14, one, one. 7 and 14. Yeah, oh no, that's not seven. Mm -mm. Read, you can read one or two. And six? Yeah. What's the record? Well, um, Romans six, one and two. Yeah, but this 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 is wrong scripture, but I want to read it too because I brought up grace. Mm -hmm. All right. So this dealing with that that grace doctrine. Grace don't just cover you for any and everything you do, and grace don't cover you. When you know you're wrong. Hmm. So read the scripture, please. All right. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin mm -hmm. that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And so there's no mix up. You come to the understanding that you're Israelite. You come to the understanding that if you want to truly show how you uh, love the most high and love Christ, you keep them commandments, you are dead to sin. It's not saying that you'll never sin again. You're dead to sin. When you wake up in the morning, you shouldn't be apt to get up and the first thing you do is sin. The law, statute, commandments should be on your mind at all times. That's what it means by dead to sin. You, you, you're supposed to be a new person, a new creature. You know, it can't mean that you should just never sin again. Then what do we got repentance for? <laughs> Everybody should be perfect. What are we even here anymore for? Mm. Everybody perfect. You wake up, you perfect. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. You know, that grace, you can't roll it. You can't even get over on the repo man like that. All right. He come and take your car. You can't just roll that grace, that grace pick. He roll it through. You don't pay nothing. It don't work like that. And like I said, uh, you're playing with your life and you're playing with eternity. Not just a couple of 20, 30 years, 40 years. And this is the one. Uh, this, is it. this is the one I want to. Uh, this, this is Romans 12 and 2. And I just, we've been, you almost read it almost every study. But it's a uh, be not conformed to this world. These doctrines, these wicked doctrines, they come from the world. Anything that you uh, read in the Bible, you find it to be true. If you look in the world, they doing the opposite. Mm -hmm. But uh, you got it up. What's that? Romans 12, or you want me to read it? Oh, no, I got 12 you. and 2. 12 and 2, yeah. Yeah. All right, Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by by the receiving of your mind. Renewing. Renewing what I said. Receiving. Oh, man, I be tripping. Excuse me, y'all. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And perfect will of God. So this is what you should be doing. Renew your mind. You got to come to the realization. When you was born and raised by your parents, it was wrong. We wasn't raised up in the same church that Peter and them was raised up in. We wasn't. We wasn't. You know, we're not being mean or beating up on nobody, but you wasn't. The Bible tells you when you come to the time you're supposed to be able to teach, somebody got to teach you again. Mm -hmm. So I tell you, you know, renew your mind. Always renew our mind. What's the next scripture we got, brother? I want to bring out um. Okay. Tell okay. me where I'm going. I'm going to bring out Romans. Mm -hmm. 15 and 4, just for edification. Okay. If y'all want to write it down, y'all can, but I'm gonna just bring that out just to let y'all know. We're gonna go into what still what we what we should do while we're fasting. But I want to bring this out. All right, Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And the reason I brought this out is because now we're finna go into learning what, what our forefathers did when they fasted. So we can know what we do now in these times. Well, when we fast, we can follow their blueprint. And we're gonna go to um first Edris 9 and 1 after this. First Edris 9 and 1. Okay. First Edris. Nine and one. 
All right, y'all ready? Okay, go ahead. Here we go, family. I'm in the wrong thing. I mean, is it first edge of nine and one? Man, I'm in second edge. Second edge is nine and one? No, no, first edge but I'm in second edge. Oh, okay. okay. So we had first edge. Nine and one. Everybody ready? All right. First Ezra is nine and one. When Ezra's fasted, I got on the side of mine. When Ezra's fasted. fasted. So we just learned from one of our forefathers how he fasted and everything. We see what we're going to do. All right. Ezra's nine and one. Oh, go ahead, Nanny. No, I have it right here. Okay. Okay. Then Ezra's rising from the court of the temple went to the chamber of Johanan, the son of Elisib, and remained there and did not, and did eat no meat nor drink water, mourning for the great iniquities of the multitude. And there was a proclamation in all Jewry and Jerusalem to all them that were in the cap that were of the captivity, that they should be gathered together at Jerusalem. And that whosoever met not there within two or three days, according as the elders that bear rule appointed their cattle should be seized to should be seized the use of the temple and himself cast out from them that were of the captivity. Man. So they 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 were serious about this fast. They was in captivity. Yeah. And remember, Ezra was pl- praying, trying to get out of it and stuff like that. And he was fasting for our people and everything. So they were real serious about it. And I'm glad you brought this script out because we we talked about this at the beginning um, when I first got here. When he came and talked about people fasting for Joe Biden. Why we not fasting for ourselves? Hmm. Yeah. Look what they did. Look how they jumped up. Hey, man, look, you don't come. You got, we, don't, we ain't dealing with you. Even the Bible tell mark those that cause offense. Because why? We need everybody on board. We trying to get out of captivity. Man, we can't. We can never get everybody on board. Because you got people that's uh, doing this, doing that. Oh, no, I got to go this way. I got to go that way. Our people never want to get on the same uh, same ball. And they become a blank to some people. It's all what it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's two words. It's two words, and it's all it is. That's a great one. Good they shot. Do become a stumbling block. About. And then point the finger at you because you keep the laws. All right, so. So they took they took their cattle to for the youth the temple and they cast them out. Yeah, you got to go. Yeah, yeah, we they. Because they, they make sacrifices yeah. with your cattle. I agree. So my thing is, you think the most high got mad that they took their cattle? Mm-hmm. Nah, he didn't care. Could have been, could he, could why? Wasn't that, was that not a righteous act? Telling everybody, hey, come, come up here and we're going to fast. Just imagine, think about the book of Job. When Job finally made it there, the king called everybody. He said, hey, nobody lips better not touch no water. Not even who? Not even the cattle in the field. Mm-hmm. So imagine... If somebody would be like, a couple of them didn't want to be like, oh no, we don't want, we're not doing that. Everybody did. Because destruction was coming. So fasting is very important. Whether you do it by yourself, it's better if you get you a, a nice group of real of true believers. You know? But I wanted to point out, this particular fast, no meat, no drink, 
Mourning for the great iniquity. Look at that word again. Mourning. Mourning. Mm -hmm. Sadness. Uh, what is it? Empathy or sympathy? I think it's sympathy. Sympathy. It's sympathy. Sympathy for who? For you, for your brothers, your sisters, the children of Israel. You know? What's our new person? Oh. Um. Let's go to Jonah 3, 5 through 7. We're going to go to Jonah, Jonah chapter 3, 5 through 7. And it's another prophet fasting at that time. Mm -hmm. Jonah is in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to find it. Chapter three, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Jonah chapter three. Jonah is a good book. Very good book. Thank you. You say five through seven, right? Now? Yes, sir. So we had Jonah chapter three, verse five through seven. It's a lot when you get there. Oh, praise Thank you. John chapter 3, verse 5 through 7. Start at 4 for me. Right? Verse 4? Yeah, verse 4. Yeah, I can put 5 and 7. 5 and 7 um, deals with the fasting. I want them to read 4 because I want to show y'all how important it was. Right. All right, we in Jonah chapter four, I mean, chapter three, verse four yes, through seven. And Jonah began to enter into the city of a day's journey. And he cried and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Hold on now. This man come up here yelling at the top of his lungs probably. The thing I want to point out is you don't have a time limit when you go get overthrown. Hmm. He telling them, 40 days, all y'all got. That's a real big incentive for you to get it together real quick. Hmm. But we don't know when our days end. So you might have 40 hours. It's very important. That's how important fasting is. And you know he was yelling when he went up in there. Because he was mad. <laughs> he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to save Nineveh. He figured they didn't need no repentance. They didn't need to be saved. They was just out of there. So he didn't want to go to them people. He was like, nah. That's why he ran the whole time. He's mm -hmm. running. Yeah. All right, verse five. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. Hold on, I go ahead. What was the most important thing done in verse five? They believe. They believe. They believe. Yeah. Because if you don't believe them, you don't care to put on sackcloth. You don't care to fast. You don't care to pray. They actually believe. Jonah come up there yelling. Imagine. And it happens. Family member come up in the family reunion screaming, hey, we got to repent. Everybody looking at them. Keep pouring the liquor. You know what I'm saying? That's how they go. That's how they, everybody going to be like, oh, this guy is. We got to shut it down. Mm -hmm. Because our people, even we not even as spiritual as we was back in the day. Mm -hmm. To where we would believe things like that when somebody would come yelling things like this. You know, the, and the world teach us that. The world teach us how to uh, shame people that come telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. And how to how to cater to people. Uh, oh, don't, you don't want to hurt their feelings. Hurt their feelings. Sometimes you getting your feelings hurt get you together. My That's mama hurt my right. feelings. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that stepping on the top, what, what does that end? What does it end? Never ending. It never ends. Nah, it's never ending. People end up hurt because we read it, we read in the scriptures about uh you see something that you're supposed to warn somebody, you get that blood off your hand. Uh -huh. So what does uh don't step on people's toes fit at with that? Mm. Because you say you believe in God, you say you love him. You say you, you how was your number one? Well, he tell you look out for your brother and sister. You get to the right there to the doorstep, and you like, well, I don't want to step on their toes. Well, guess what? You can take that sin, and you can you it's gonna go with you too. Then, hey, 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 
Only God could judge me. Yeah. They got that Tupac on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, they got that Tupac on them. Only and that's God crazy. Well, that's yeah, yeah, only God yeah, could yeah. become a Tupac. Yeah, and people say only God could judge them. It makes no sense. It's like we live in a world where you can't just, well, go run in the middle of the street and don't look both ways because you got to judge. Is this car close enough to be the business or not? But don't judge. Are you looking back? Running the street. Why you didn't tell me? You say, hey, well, I, I can't make no judgment. I can't judge you. Know? <laughs> Isaiah 58 and 1. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't mind the world judgment. That's the oh, thing. Oh, okay. They 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 worry about when people judge them according to the scripture. Yeah. Cause they don't mind going into the courthouse yeah. and letting somebody with a black robe hit up and tell them, oh, well, you gonna do this. Most you don't of them, hear they nobody go see up in there is they oppress us. That's why they don't mind. Yeah. They scared they oppress us. They don't want us telling them nothing, though. Right. Or, or none of the prophets telling them nothing like that. You know, it's... Finish reading this, huh? All right, we at um, verse 6, y'all. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he, and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor be nor beast herd nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. So I want to touch on that right there. Right, so I got a question. I'm, I'm just going with I'm asking out. So I'm guessing this. Now this would be your most important part of the uh, the situation about when if you're not eating or drinking, I figure your animals that surround you shouldn't eat or drink neither. Yeah, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So so if you have a dog in a house or whatever cat, they should be fasting along with your you. If I'm not eating, there, your whole house should be fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not just you. Okay, I didn't know that one. That's what I'm saying. I never read it in that that instance like that. Okay. Anything else I mean? Well, I mean, well, I mean, yeah, if you want to do like this was serious, like they was all about to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. But let's say if we fasted for something else, let's just say the men get together and say we're gonna fast. And it's a, it's men doing it. Yeah. You don't have to do that to your house. Okay, okay, I see what you're saying. But if you want like it, like if you know you got it, you dealing with something pertaining seriously pertaining to your house and I'm the whole house, house, my house needs to shut down yeah, yeah even yeah. my wife I'm like we all yeah, fast enough in here shut yeah. it down yeah yeah you know what I'm saying make sure she clean enough to go shut it down be straight yeah and, uh, can I say something? yes, yes ma'am ma even when they would go and fight other uh, nations they would tell them to destroy the animals also so it's so a connection right. with you own an animal you know what I'm saying? Yeah, certain yeah. instances. That's your family. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, I'm talking about even other nations. Yeah. You kill them and you kill yeah. their animals. Yeah, yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Because. <laughs> and I, I think. Just saying, you know what I'm saying? You know, mm -hmm. Bring it back. You're talking about the consumption of. When they brought them animals back, most of the time. Kill, kill everything, yeah. yeah. And they still kept, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it was, and I think it was also just about sure, also about obedience too, because he's telling them, if I'm walking you through this this wilderness, first of all, we know Christ go feed his people regardless. He did it when he was on earth. He did it when he was watching over us as we were walking through the earth. Mm -hmm. So he tell you. My, and, and another thing, people always be like, well, why, well, why? Sometimes asking why I get you in trouble. Why don't you just do it? Because we can't sit here and point out in the scriptures, oh, it's because of this, it's because of that. But we do know he said, do it. Just do it. Because he might, you saw, you know, these animals, they might have been having sex with the animals. Oh. So the animals are unclean. You, it could be, but what I'm saying is it could be anything. Yeah. Because most of the time when he's asking the wife a place out, he was also, he made them burn it too, because it's a cleansing process too. Uh -huh. But then sometimes he'd get to a place, he might have looked at him like, you know what, y'all live low on food, y'all go ahead and take these out. Yeah, take it. Y'all need to eat, you know what I'm saying? Y'all need this, y'all need that. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So it was also an obedience thing to where it was like, okay. And we know also from the story when the man that went and stole the victuals and hit him under the tent. He just be testing out, well, who 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 up in the who up in your army? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Is everybody following me? It's so, like that, um, you know how you see this, how I'm thinking about it. You know how you see when the army have the the arm, they got one man that he said, salute hope and stuff like that. They they turn this way. And I'm guessing that's I he all is doing that with our lives and stuff like that. Well, hey, go up in there and destroy everything. But don't right. take the animals. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you're gonna see if you um stand it and respect him, fear him. That's basically what it is. I want you to fear me. Yeah, my te- we say fear me and see my terribleness. Let me say that yeah. in first chronicles. I need y'all to see this. Fear me and see my terribleness. Have but we should though. Yeah. We should. The world teaches us not to fear Christ. Mm-hmm. The, the, the world and gave us this Jesus Christ, this this. This Greek God. Right, I love That's why he life. white. Because he's a Greek God. Mm-hmm. And this and this God, they didn't, they, it's like they didn't, they didn't lay them on top of the God of the Bible. Yeah. And this is who they really believe in. Because and it's it, it's crazy. Because when you read the scriptures, the one they teach you in church is nothing like the one, that, even the one that's in the New Testament. He nothing like the one that they give you. So follow the one in the Bible, the one that the, the one that tell you he great and terrible. That's why they came you know, the, the man of war. Yeah, <laughs> they have poor understanding. What's our next scripture? And hey, we gonna go to um, still on what not to do when on fasting. We're gonna go to First Corinthians chapter seven, and we'll start at verse. We we put seven and five. But I'm going to start at verse 4 just to bring edification to it. 1 Corinthians 7 and 4. 5. 7 and 5. We're going to have to start at verse 5. Everybody in the red in this, and y'all know what's going on right here. You just Paul breaking down how you should be in the... um. I started four. I started four. I'm gonna start at three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, three, huh? Okay. Three. Just to give edification what's going on. Everybody else, say lot. Say lot. All right, we're in first Corinthians chapter seven, verse three. No, I'm gonna just read two seven, y'all. Y'all mind? No, we here, we go, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. We don't miss nothing. Yeah, yeah. I want to. I, I like. You just want to make sure they they yeah, get the whole get the matter. Whole matter. Okay. All right. First Corinthians chapter seven verse one. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, and y'all know Paul speaking right now. So the Church of Corinth is writing to him things that's happening inside the church and what's going on and what they're dealing with. And he's. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter seven. Oh, did I say it wrong? Am I saying Chronicles first today and stuff like that? No, no. You said, yeah, you were saying Corinthians. <laughs> <laughs> Not today you said Chronicles. Nah, you good. Huh? First Corinthians chapter seven. Seven, verse one. We're going to start at we're one. Start at verse one. Okay. All right, here we go. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse one. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is a good, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. And that's what, he, to avoid fornication, what is he speaking of? A woman, yes, yes. But what, a woman going out being a, a whore, harlot, or a man going out being a whoremonger. There we go. This- now nah, hold on. This was actually worse than that. Well, this was. Yeah, let's go back two chapters. Cause this, remember, he just said according to which I wrote into me. Let's see what they were talking about. This is why, cause a lot of people, the reason he said a man should have his wife and a woman should have her husband. This is why. Mm-hmm. First Corinthians chapter five, five verse, verse one. one. First Corinthians chapter five, verse one. Two chapters back, y'all. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. It is reported 
commonly mm -hmm. that there is fornication among you and such fornication as is not so much as named amongst the Gentiles the heathen. that one should have his father's wife. This is what they was doing. They were sleeping with their father's wives. And when they wrote Paul, Paul wrote back and this is what he's talking about. That's why he says commonly reported. Remember, they would go to and fro. Mm -hmm. So when you get to chapter seven, he's still referring to this. And if you if you think he's not, you have to read all, all the chapters together. Mm -hmm. But he's talking about this. They were sleeping with their father's wives. You know that's a big no-no in Israel. Yes, that is. That is a that's a big no-no in Israel. Yeah. So let's go back to chapter seven, family. All right, we're back in chapter seven. We at verse. Three. Oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Read verse two right here. All we right, go bro. just y'all can go ahead and go back, but I just want to read verse two because I want you I want to show y'all the pride of these rascals. I'm finishing off at verse five again. His father's wife, verse two, and ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he had that he that had done this deed might be taken away from among you. They wouldn't even correct they wouldn't even people that were doing it. You didn't have the brothers go tell his brother, hey man, you, you had to stop this, or you had to get away from us. Back then you would have killed them. You would have been killing people. But now you don't go kill them, you know what I'm saying? He got it. So now it's like, hey, you gonna do this? You're not gonna be able to deal with us. And you know, Israel, they probably had the thing going like how they got right now. You know how they got the thing going, oh, I'll get another man, another dude woman. Everybody want to mess yeah, with like another dude, person. woman. Like yeah, that's the that's thing. thing. So you know, Israel back then was boasting his 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 daddy wife around, probably walking around with her and everything. Hey, I got her now. You know, you know how we all we take things to the extreme. Like Apollon, yeah. Like father, like son. Like father, like son. We take everything to the extreme. That's why he say the Gentiles don't even do this thing. Right. You know, y'all tripping. Right. So that's what he was reporting about. We can go back to verse seven. I mean, chapter seven, not. All right, chapter seven, so verse that's, three. That's why I say it was worse. It wasn't just regular adults. Man, they taking their daddy's wife. Mm. Come on, man, that's disgusting. Jesus. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why you killed both of them, sis. Right. Who's the first person did that? What? Out of Israel. Uh, you got it, man. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I think it started with an R. He sees oh, Ruben. Ruben. Uh, oh, Ruben. From Israel. Remember. From Israel. Ruben. Remember Ruben went laid with the concubine. In the couch, the dad's couch. With Hilka, I think, huh? He laid with Hilka, huh? Bill High, I think. Bill High. Bill, Bill High. I think it was Bill High. It ain't no Hilka in there, huh? It's Bill High. Bill High and, uh, uh, Hilka. <laughs> I don't think it's Hilka. Oh, okay, my bad. Yeah, Ruben is. Ruben still. is still. Yeah, he's Dan still is the only one not counting. Mm-hmm. Because Dan was a snake and an adder to the pack. But Reuben, you don't do that. All right, so. Lord, do that too. Now, this his daughter slept with the um, da yeah. with their daddy. He was pretty much raped by his daughter. They got him he drunk and took advantage. And Ham on him, he went and just looked at his daddy naked. Yeah. While he was drunk. Oh, well, he said he looked at his nakedness, though. Yeah. That was his mama. Wouldn't it be his mama? Man, no, I think he said he looked mama? upon his dad naked. He, yeah. yeah. he said he looked upon his dad naked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know, you're not supposed to look at another another man nakedness. Oh no, that's one of the biggest. Oh, that's okay. one of the biggest reasons that you don't look at porn because you're looking at another man naked. You're so right, you're so right. Isn't there somewhere in the Bible where they, you know, tell you like when your child gets a certain age, they shouldn't see your nakedness? Right. Mm -hmm. I, I never. Like, but you know, most of us never, do that. I mean, not even knowing it, most parents, like when I grew up, man, my mom, I couldn't go in that restroom with my mom or my mm -hmm. daddy wouldn't allow me coming up in there. Even my step pop, you know, mm -hmm. and, oh, they closing yeah. the curtains on you and stuff like that. Like, oh, you yeah. got to go bad. Let me close the curtain. Go I don't know. Say it like that. No, don't come I don't up in know. I, like, I don't know no scripture that says a specific number, but we know it's in the mind. It's, yeah, just, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. unacceptable. That's After a certain saying, age, yeah, yeah. It's just unacceptable. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, we back in um I know. first Corinthians. Chris Danny tell you what, 12 years, but wait, can they tell you they take on their scenes at 12 and stuff like that? But 
Way before that. Yeah. Way before that. Children know better. Yeah, Children that's what know I know better. You know, that's what they always told me too. You take your sins on when, when he turned 12. Yeah, 12 that's or something right. like that. Yeah. And I used to be like, oh, okay. you hold your own sins. Yeah. Like my daddy been holding my sins. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I turned 12. He's like, yeah, take your sins back. All right. Come on. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3, y'all. Let the husband render unto the wife do benevolence. Do benevolence. Mm -hmm. Why? Why y'all think he say do benevolence? Well, do mean the same. So why would he say do benevolence? I know this is a whole nother topic, but I'm just asking. Why would he say do benevolence? Because that's part of the law. It's old. Do benevolence. Well, why? Old, right. what, what, what does every woman should be pushing to? To be. You looking at it this morning? Well, to be virtuous. What and what she was wish what all she did, what all that virtuous woman he spoke about, what all she did. Built care of the house, um, took care of business finances, and um uh, built him up. Was his pillar of rest when she got home? Mm -hmm. So so when he got home, so it's due benevolence. Like it's due to like you owe her this, man. She she doing for me like her sacrifice is her body to me. <laughs> And helping you to be a help me to you. She's mm -hmm. sacrificing. Like you go out and you sacrifice yourself. That was she sacrificing me. She Pay do benevolence. Home. Pay her back. What she what you owe her, man. You owe her a great time or this mm -hmm. here or this that love and stuff, attention, oh, everything great. like that. Yeah. I just like that. I just wanted to bring that out. It's true though. It is due. It is due. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you know, that's why he tell a woman, you know, a woman's supposed to. You know, he say a woman should be, well, Paul says it, but he said he got it from the Lord. A woman should be quiet in the church. Really, a woman going to be the quiet woman. And all she doing is showing herself sacrificing by her works and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she not really. Go ahead. No, I was going to tell you, Genesis 3.16, a woman desires is to her husband. It's to her husband and everything. So she always taking care of you. This, this is what y'all do. When y'all see it, y'all get in a relationship, y'all want to be married to do. And y'all think y'all do benevolence. Y'all want y'all benevolence back. Y'all you know? old too. Y'all old too. Y'all oh y'all deserve it. You yeah. know you got a lot of women out there that's over being in too much control with it, trying to get her <laughs> too much from it. They take get the answer. They try to take a mile, curses. but that's part of the curses. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right. They want a man to be mm -hmm. a kid. They just that's they come a lot from that feminist movement, man. Mm -hmm. That independent, you don't need a man and it's poison. Mm -hmm. Telling women they don't need a man is poison. Not, and that and that also helped with that's why the the, uh, the lesbian they shooting up in numbers. Cause you telling women they don't need a man, so now they're gonna mess with women. You know, it's poison. It's not true. A man need a woman and a woman need a man. Straight up. You need each other. Balance. Cause I, you I mean, need each other. Man, I know we get out. Excuse me, y'all. I know we tripping. But she told me this one time before all. Oh, Cause like the real part, like when he when they you know, y'all took a piece when he took a piece away from us and made the woman, mm -hmm. you know we get all the strong aspects of ourselves, like the emotional side that we don't have and like the woman, you know how the woman have all that. He might have took that away from us when he made y'all and he say, well, to make it balanced, I'm gonna put that in the woman. Not saying this is for real it's for edification for everybody. I'm just, saying. I'm just saying probably that's what happened. Like he put all the emotions and everything up in the woman. Well, she's gonna be this because she's gonna right. be the weaker vessel. You're gonna be the strong one, so you're gonna be like that, and y'all gonna balance each other out. It's a yeah. great measure, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like a man got masculine energy, yeah. and a woman got feminine, feminine energy. energy. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, same thing. Want to keep reading? That? All right, we still in um, verse three, y'all. We right after the colon, and likewise, also the wife unto the husband. Mm -hmm. The wife had not power of her own body, but the husband, and likewise. Also, the husband had not power of his own body, but the wife. I remember that. And here we go with the point, y'all. Mm -hmm. Defraud you not one the other, except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your, for your inconsistency. Right. So this one, so that's this another thing. You fasting, there's no sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. it's, it's clear as day right here. Right? You're not supposed to be doing that. 
But in another reason, the, the most simple reason, sex makes you unclean. Mm -hmm. That's why you should people, they do got people that do teach that you can have sex on the Sabbath, but sex makes you unclean. Why would you want to be unclean on the day of rest, the day of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Just doesn't. And another thing is, it's not, it's not, it's not his pleasure. It's your own pleasure. Right. You have something you want to say? Yeah, it's not really like this topic, but um, can I, um, okay, I know it says that the wife had no power over her own body, but the husband, and likewise. So is there a such thing as, as rape within a marriage? Yeah. Yeah. Hell, you yeah. can't just go hold the woman down and take her. Yeah, like Even you if you're married to her. You know what I'm saying? No. And that's what the whole scripture right there is about. Like he, he trying to tell you, do not deny your husband if or do not deny your wife. If she's saying, you know what I'm saying, hey, I, I want it tonight, or he's saying it, you might as well give it to him. Because if not, then who comes in and gets up in their head? Right. Satan. Right. That's what he's saying. Don't or let Satan come and tip you from your inconsistency. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not physically pleasing. Yeah, he'll All jump right. on you. He'll start putting another man up in her head or exactly. woman up in his head and stuff like that. Then you're gonna leave, and once that trick, you 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 know, go out to cheat or something well, like right. that. Then you 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 wonder why he's looking at this other woman. Mm -hmm. Cause she's showing him attention, and you're not. You know, and that's how the devil sneak in there. You know, and then if you know the marriage is uh, all blown up, that's the point I make. And that's happening a lot in a lot. Of, I know that's off topic, but that's happening in a lot of marriages. You see a lot of the marriages, mm -hmm. the men saying that, I, I'm going to say from a, man, a man's aspect, you see a lot of men saying that they not getting it like they want it. And you know, they, you go, you know, the woman got the excuse of, well, I got kids and everything and stuff, but y'all got to make them certain time or well, we got to get this out the way, you know, because I'm gonna go to cheating or something like that, or she will, you never yeah, know, you know? She will. Right. It's natural feelings. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's natural, it's natural feelings to want to do that. So that's what Paul is telling you about. That's why he's saying, if you don't have power over your body, you just, because why would you do that? Because you, you really forcing, you forcing her to step out the marriage. Mm -hmm. Are she forcing you to step out the marriage for this one physical pleasure? That's what it is. That's why I, I is right. That's what's happening a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And another thing, and we about to get back on subject, but women are taught to withhold it to get what they want yeah, too. They want. That's another thing. So where did that come from? The devil. Mm -hmm. Because that caused that caused way more ruckus in the house than anything. Mm -hmm. Cause you think you're doing something good, hard, but now you wondering why he not mad no more. After about three, four days, he not mad no more. And you wondering why. He went out and got it from somewhere else. So he come home and he cool now. You know what I'm saying? Now you mad about that now. Yeah, you done started yeah. some other stuff now, you know? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's go. Um. All right, y'all. Now that was some things. You had anything else to add on to what we supposed to do on fans? Mm -mm, not other than the story about Christ. Okay. All right. Well, we did that one. We went through all of them? Yeah. yeah. I still got some more right now. Yeah, that's finished. That's all finished. right. All right. Now we finna go into Moses fasted. We're gonna go into the people who fasted to let you know that fasting is a great thing. Yahweh Shah fasted. Mm -hmm. Moses fasted. Judith fasted. So we're gonna go into some of these things and show y'all who all fasting and what's why it's important to fast. Good examples. Good examples, yes, yes, sir. So if you want to mark it off, just put examples of um you can put examples of ancestors fasting. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Examples of ancestors, forefathers, foremothers. Get into a get into a habit of referring to them as your forefathers or foremothers mm -hmm. because the Bible is very personal. Don't don't uh sit yourself outside the bounds of the Bible. Nah, this your people. Mm -hmm. be a Deuteronomy 32 and 7. Deuteronomy 32 and 7. She got fuzz. I bring it out. Don't be afraid. Want me to read it for y'all? These are your people. You still on them? 
I think you went to mute. Read it. Just go. Uh, yeah, I'm right here, though. Oh, okay. Want me to read it for you? Oh, you, you gonna break it down? Yeah, let me get down. I'm gonna put it on the screen. Oh, yeah, this is another reference like um, Romans 15 and 4. That's right. right on the side of it, too. So, this would be the Romans 15 and 4. This is where you find it end up in the Old Testament. So, if you show them in the Old Testament, they well, it ain't in the New Testament. Well, let's go to the New Testament, the Romans 15 and 4, then, you know. All right, y'all ready? Romans, I mean, um, Deuteronomy 32 and 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will shew thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. You see, we supposed to ask our elders. Mm -hmm. we, but a lot of our elders didn't know. So the Most High put the spirit on us to search for them. Mm -hmm. And we come to find out our elders are right here in the Bible. Right. That's exactly. What uh, Job, Job 8 and 8 real quick. I, I got you. Selah. Selah. All right, Job 8 and 8. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to search of their fathers, and prepare thyself to, to the search of their fathers. Me. Well, he tell you that because keep going. Right. let me keep going all right verse nine okay go ahead for we are but of yesterday and know nothing because our days upon earth are a shadow that's very important on the yeah. plan a shadow so the shadow is just a, a glimpse uh well yeah a glimpse but it's just also just something like a shadow is never the thing that casts a shadow Mm -hmm. Right, so that's kind of how you're looking at it. Like, like I brought it up earlier, a thousand years, just a day to the Lord, mm -hmm. just a day. Imagine how many lives oh, go through like that just when he blinked. Straight up, you know. Yeah. Just, just remember, he said, he said, prepare yourself uh, on the search for your fathers, and when you find out this information, because you you from a holy bloodline, and when you find that, it, it, it takes some change. Mm. Yeah. Keep passing it on. And you, and you, we have to pass it on. We have to. We got to tell our children. We got to have our children to hold fast to this thing. Yeah. You got you to gotta yell it from the mountaintops. Right. But it, you're right, Doc. It starts with your children. And that's the best way to do it because your, your children, they're going to teach their children and their children and their children. Pass it down. Not only that, why are you teaching other people and not teaching your own heart? Right. You know? Now you you teaching other people children how to be righteous, but your children some misfits. Hmm. You got them issues too. You know, you know one of the things I hear, and why I, I we get into the next scripture. How could a parent disown their child for being gay? <laughs> what? Guess what? Yeah, people say that. How could you disown your child? Man, your child a a a a, a, a heathen or a misfit? You got to get them out of there. Same thing with your, your mother, your brother, get them out of there. Why, why play with your own life? Right. Don't play with your own life. People just don't understand. Like, it's just, mean, not, you, it's just not you. You being selfish, just worried about yourself with the whole situation. When you really think about the whole gay community and the way people try to say, well, I don't pay no mind or I'm not gonna disown it. You really being selfish and you worried about yourself because they got kids growing up that's looking at this. You know what I'm saying? They gonna grow up and they gonna think it's cool to be like that. So now we need to kill all of y'all then. You know what I'm saying? Get all of y'all out of there. Since you wanna condone it, we gonna kill you too because you might go that far too. You know? Yeah. What scripture you got out? Oh, we at home. Um, I got off. Um, next we gonna go to um, Exodus 34 and 28. We gonna start with Moses. All right. We're gonna start in Exodus. 34 you said? 34 and 28. Exodus 34, 
Say loud. Mm-hmm. All right, right here we're gonna. I'm gonna show y'all how Moses fasted. Moses fasted with Yahweh. Mm-hmm. All right, we go. I'm gonna start at 27, y'all. Yeah. All right, Exodus chapter 38, of 34, excuse me, y'all, and verse 27. And the Lord said unto Moses, write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant. And the Ten Commandments. Ooh. 40 days, 40 nights, nothing to eat. It was fine. Because he was living off the off the energy of the king. How, what scripture y'all got for that one? Mm-hmm. All right, I'm gonna give y'all the what it say. So y'all gotta find it for me. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. I don't know. I think I'm saying it right out. Hold up. Um, man can't live on bread and word alone, but every word of the um, but the words of precede after, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Bring it out for me, sis. Y'all want me to tell y'all y'all want to? No, look because it's in, it's in multiple. Okay. Let well, them find it out so they can get it right. You in no, a rush? No, I'm, no, I ain't in a rush, but the people on the computer about to know because I already know it. Oh, man. It's good. <laughs> that ain't fair. What is it? Yeah, that ain't fair, <laughs> no, man. It's Luke chapter 4, verse 4. Luke yep. chapter 4, verse 4? Mm-hmm. Yep. Get your candy right there. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, huh? Good job. Good job. Very great job. Hey, can I speak on that on the spiritual thing? Hey, go ahead. Huh? Spiritual level. Look, man, look, I'm over 40. It took me 40 years to wake up. I didn't have that, that living bread or that living water until 40 years. That's well, symbolic on to me. All praises, huh? Would say Luke what next, sis? Four and four. All right, Luke four and four. Yeah, I'm gonna read it for everybody. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So Moses wasn't even tripping up there. He was fooling him up. He come down <laughs> glowing and everything, man. Look, Moses wasn't tripping up there, man. I'm yeah. living off the words of the Lord. Yeah, the whole conversation yeah. with the Lord. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you're in the spirit, a, when, when you're, you're in the spirit, spirit, that's what you it be. You kind of have like a stomach ground, but after that, it go away. You mm-hmm. don't be hungry no more because you get fed spiritually. Yeah. yeah. Man, even when, you know what I'm saying, that's exactly how I feel like, especially when we get in here on Sabbath and have these great conversations about the Bible and stuff. Mm-hmm. When we done, we be ready to eat. You, you, you ain't yeah. worried about that. Yeah. And we go six, eight hours. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But as soon as you finish, you're like, ooh. <laughs> trying to get something to eat. That's why I understand, like, like in the Bible, they say when Paul would go and talk to people, and they say he'll preach all, he'll preach the midnight and then they'll break bread. I understand that because, mm-hmm. because that's the same thing we do. You know, we'll we'll, we'll talk, and while you giving the word and the spirit in the room and everything good, man, nobody word. Some of them, some of us be worried about. I candy and junk food. We yeah. do sweet tooth and stuff just but, to get our mouth from being but you, dry. You full off of the spirit yeah. and the word. Yeah, yeah. you know, we yeah. full off the spirit and the that's, word. That's exactly right. We going yeah. back to Exodus. Right? Yeah, um, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. That's what I want to touch on. I just want okay. to touch on um, just showing y'all some of the prophets that fasted, some of the great prophets. Now we're gonna show y'all your house shot fasted. Let's get it. And we're going to go to Matthew 14 and 23. So allow me to get that. Fourth, Matthew 14 and 23. 26. Mm. 
pay attention to what I want. No, man, no, 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 excuse me, y'all. Let's go to, um, excuse me, I'm sorry, y'all. No, nah, that's the one, but I don't want to hit that one first. Let's go to Matthew 4 and 1. Matthew, you want to go to Matthew 4, 4 and 1? 1? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. 4 Let's go. Hold on. Now. Let me get that right there. All right. I'm sorry, too, y'all. I'm sorry. We forget, y'all. Hey, baby, I can see your red pencil. Thank you. Four and one, correct? Yeah. Say lie. All right. Matthew 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. <laughs> Hunger. Hungry. So that's what we just pointed out that Christ also fasted. Who was he getting closer to? Himself? To his dad. To, his, to, to the father. Because the father was, he was the direct, he had a direct um, line to the father. Yeah. And we got to go through three-way when we go. <laughs> <laughs> you got to hit that phone. <laughs> you got to kick the phone and stuff, put them on what? three-way. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Let, me, <laughs> let me connect you. Yeah. Hey, read verse three. I want to make a point. All right, All right verse three. I'll make a couple of points real quick. And when the tempter came mm -hmm. to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made free. So here go the point we're making. Remember the whole conversation, fasting. If we're talking about fasting, we're talking about physical or spiritual? Spiritual. Spiritual. So let's look at it from the spiritual. When he got hungry, who came? The devil. The devil. So think about it. When you when you right. when you meditate in these scriptures and you getting it, getting it, getting it, that's when you're at your strongest point. You go to fasting, you go to backing away from the Bible, guess who show up? Here he comes. He coming. Oh, he coming. Just like I can always tell y'all about when you clean that room out, he coming with seven old devils like, man, the room ready to go. We, 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 we about to live good. He clean. He's a competitor. I'm yeah. going to say that. He loves competition. That's, yeah. You cleaned it out good? Oh, man, let me go get about 10 more. Take a little people. vacation away from you? Yeah. Let me go get up in there, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, man, y'all ready to go party? Yeah. So they think they got you. But I just want to point out, even when Christ, when Christ, 40 days, 40 nights, he took his bed a long time to get hungry. Mm -hmm. So when he get hungry, he ain't even ate yet. Who come first, the meal or the devil? The devil. Like, man, hey, before he eat and, and get his body together, let me try to get him. You notice he ain't come before. He ain't come Question. before the 40 days or the 40 nights. He never came. Right? Question for the congregation. Hold on, not, hold on, not. Okay. What, happened, what happened before the spirit led him to the wilderness? What was the event that happened before Christ was led to the wilderness in chapter four? It was a holy day. No. What happened? No. What are you talking about, bro? What was the event that happened before Christ was led to the wilderness in chapter four? What happened? Oh, oh yeah. No, he wasn't tipped. Mm -mm. He was baptized, huh? He was baptized mm -hmm. to receive the Holy Spirit. The dove came down. <laughs> then he went into the into the uh wilderness and, and, and fasted 40 days for yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then here come the devil. So, that, and I'm telling you, we read the scriptures. Please ask it too. Say, if you come, if you come to serve the Lord, do what? Be prepared prepare yeah. our soul for temptation. temptation. Christ had to prepare so As soon as he got the spirit, he went fast and prayed, and he knew it was on. Remember when his mama asked him to turn in water to wine? Mm -hmm. What he told her? It wasn't time. It ain't my, it ain't time, my time because he he wasn't supposed to be doing no miracles. He had him been baptized, anointed. The Lord said, "Hey, it's him right here, y'all." He was introduced to the world through his baptism. 
I wonder what his mama was running around telling people. <laughs> My son got magic. Like, how does she just go up to your son and say, hey, make this water wine? <laughs> yeah, like, and then, and then she was something else. Because when he told her no, she didn't even ask him. She looked at the dude and say, hey, y'all do whatever you tell y'all do. Say y'all just walk walk away. Out. Because you know that's how your mama do. Oh. We know that's how mama do. My son she ain't trying to heat. He <laughs> you know? Right. But that's that's just, so when you come, you find out this truth, you learn these scriptures, and you and you you set yourself to line up with the Lord, the devil coming. Straight up. From the right he away. coming. All right, what you had to say? Oh, hold on, man. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm right here. Oh, uh, hey, do, do everybody know what the word devil means? Yeah. I'm talking about everybody. I know, I know, I know. I was, you know, I'm talking about the new members and everything. Yeah, we went over the. Uh, okay, I mean, I'm just trying to make sure yeah, because you know the devil coming. Yeah, it's, devil it's nothing, many it's nothing more than a deceiver. Okay, right, 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 right. Man, you you had a question? <laughs> That's all you had to say. I... Oh, I had one more thing. Like, 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 right now today, we, we turn the water into wine and water down scriptures. Mm -hmm. We turn it into wine and make you feel some type of way when it get it to you. Good yeah, man, that's a real one, bro. Yeah. I ain't never thought about it like that. Yeah, me either. You, make you know what I'm saying? We, that, that's, that, that's how you turn water into wine. We 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 getting up, we getting out of that watered down scripture we've been getting and getting this real wine. There you go. Fill that up true. The they, they make they make you feel some type of way when you hear. Pouring that Morgan David up. And I feel some type of way. I come with uh, with gladness and mirth is what the scriptures come right, with. Right, right, and with fear. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Man, you yeah, had a question? Yeah. Uh, about his mother and his brother. Okay. So they, did they, were they not uh, keeping up with the program that he was doing, his ministry? Because why would he tell them, you know, these are my mother and my brother, mm -hmm. like these who doing, you know, following me? Man, you know, did they stop following I think. First of all, the Catholic Church hype up Mary way too much. Yeah. Because they got you praying to Mary and everything. I'm gonna be honest with you, Nana. I used to kind of think like that. Mm. But also, he could have just been proving a point yeah. and letting them know that you know you don't let nobody disturb you from this word. Yeah. You don't let nobody distract you from this word. But we do know he didn't get up and go outside. He kept preaching, he kept telling that truth. So I think what I took from what I took from the story is, first of all, you gotta understand everybody has a position in your life. My wife has a position in my life. It's, it's never gonna be higher than the Lord. So when it comes to the Lord, and I mean her, they had the discussion. I don't care what I'm doing. I don't care how long I'm doing it for. If I'm dealing with the scriptures or making videos or break it down, doing less of anything. I don't care what's going on in the house. I got to do this first. And, but she understands it. So she knows she doesn't bother me. She helps me. She makes her intense to the house. And I think that's what I took from the story. Like Christ is telling you, no, your brothers, the ones that, that work in this truth with you, those are your mothers and brothers. Mm -hmm. see, see, we, we see you as a mother, man. You know what I'm saying? That's how we see you. We call you nanny, but we see you as a mother. I, I These are my brothers. By each other, man. Oh, can, can I can I kind of elaborate on it? I mean, why why yeah why why would he um <laughs> that's why he called him his sisters and brothers? Y'all go I'm a people child in the kingdom. You know my that. brother and my brother did not make it. You said that already. Yeah. Oh, can I kind of? It could have been that, or it could have been him making a point to not be allow people to distract you from getting the word. Okay, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna say this. Mary, remember, she knew the she knew God and she knew the Holy Spirit. She knew the, the angels of God had came to her too. Mm -hmm. So I, I I I'm not gonna say that she wasn't following them. She I think she was more excited that she that that, that she had that particular son. You know, the mm -hmm. reason that she acted the way she acted. Mm -hmm. But then I think it was symbolic for us today. Because to let you know who your mother is today. It was symbolic. Right, I got you. I know how that's right. I believe she was there for him at his crucifixion. Yeah. And um, the other Mary, 
So she was yeah. following him and she was listening. She was following him. Yeah, so maybe, yeah, yeah. She, she I think he was making a point. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, you I think it, it, it was spiritual and symbolic to us today. Mm -hmm. It's like, like. Because like, our mother. Right. Excuse, excuse me, let me finish. Because our mothers and fathers right now today ain't following the scripture. Like, so he telling you, hey, man, your mother and father is, if you're going to be right. following me, your mother and father is going to be the ones who follow his word. Right. Right. That's why I say it's just, that's how I feel about it. That's like us sitting up in here and somebody come knock on the door, hey, man, I need to see you. Man, I'm busy. You know, you need to come back. Mm -hmm. I do it all the time on the Sabbath. You know, I'll be, I be studying or something, I get phone calls. Mm -hmm. I'm in my scriptures. Mm -hmm. I don't even take facts sometimes. I talk to you when the sun go down. Yeah, it ain't right, personal. Right, right. It ain't personal. Right. You know, and I'm, I mean, I don't know how y'all feel about it, but on the Sabbath, them verses be coming. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For me, mm -hmm. when I'm in the scriptures on the Sabbath, them verses be coming. So I love being in, the, in, in, in my scriptures. I don't like being bothered. See, if you had something... You know, I was just gonna say, I can say that I was just saying that maybe the reason why I was like that is to to show us that we was gonna go through the same stuff ourselves. We were gonna have the same people, which is our family, to try, try to sidetrack you. Try to be those be those stumbling blocks for us. Because we're not to wanna do it or we're not gonna be chilling or look that differently. I'm sure each and every one of us had to feel the um the feeling of unacceptance mm -hmm. and get comfortable with it because you're gonna be like this for a while. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> we understand. Excuse please. me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good shout out. Good scripts. Thank you. But we understand, sis. It wasn't the end of my head. Yeah, my nine. We got everything we wanted out of. Uh, oh yeah, this is um. Man, that's that's that is. That's your biggest point. He, he tell you, he tell you. Well, I'm sorry. No, go but ahead, he bro. just he tell you, man. I I talk, I come to bring division. It yeah, don't get no no. It don't that. it don't get no more simple than that. So he telling you, he telling you. I mean, are you gonna follow me? At the end of the day, you gonna follow me. That's why I was telling y'all on, on Judgment Day. Man, he don't really care what you gotta say. He gonna run the tape. Because the Bible clear, my word don't go out void. The Bible clear, you Negroes are the Israelites. I mean, any way you wanna prove it, it's proven. So he knocking on your door. Did you answer? Cause when you get up there, he ain't gonna try, he ain't trying to hear this Jesus stuff. He ain't trying to hear that. He ain't trying to hear that I was living by grace. He gonna tell you no, you wasn't. He going to tell you, because what you was doing, I don't allow grace for that. Straight up. So you're like, well, what we got to do? <laughs> bad business. It's going to be bad. It's too late. He proved it by the, uh, the, the rich man. You wait till you see your demise, and now you trying to get it right? It's too late. It's too late. You don't have, you don't even have a body no more. How you going to go back up there and get it right? Don't wait for that. That's why that's why when Nanny brought up a good question. Man, don't let nothing distract you. Your mama, that's a big distraction. Because yeah. when mama call, you go answer. My mama called me most of the time. I'm about to pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hello? Even if it's something crazy, that's still my mama. I'm going to answer the phone. That's my mama. So when Christ's mama came and she was like, yeah, tell him I'm outside. He took the opportunity in my eyes. He took the opportunity to be like, hey, don't let nobody distract you from this truth. Just like he told, I put the scripture, he told the people, uh, why, do you, why, do, why do they not fast? He said it and they say, I only be here for a little time. Yeah. You only on the earth for a little time. You only get in the word for a little time. You got to make that seed flourish. It got to grow. Your mama can distract you from that. Not shooting at nobody, mama. But your mama could distract you from that. Your brothers can distract you from that. Your sister could distract you from that. Your wife can distract you from that. Them bad children could distract you from that. Right? That's why you need to keep your kids in order. You know, the best thing for children is to teach them when they're babies. Because they, they, they absorb everything like a sponge. You teach them right, they will take it forever. 
Yeah, but up. but the best but the thing about being an adult is if they see you waver, mm-hmm. they go waver. Cause they gonna see you not taking it serious. They're not gonna take it serious. Oh, they'll be your help me be that iron sharp and iron for you. You know, BJ, BJ throw it out there all the time. Hey, he get on his daddy and stuff like that. Tell him, hey, yeah. you ain't supposed to be doing that. Grandmother, what you doing? What you doing with that on pork right there and stuff like that? So they'll bring that judgment and edification on your butt too and stuff. Yeah. Cause kids ain't gonna bite their tongue. Yeah. You want to this one? Yeah, yeah unless you want to touch on um your house, huh? Oh, well, we did it already. Mm-hmm. Huh? Yeah, let's go to Neil Ma right quick. All right. We still on the um, we still on the fast. tip of just showing y'all how we fast it to and we'll, why we fast it. We fast it to get up out of oppression mm-hmm. and to get and, and to get up out of what well, like what's pro, pro, oppression, captivity. captivity and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know. We fast it. And pray. Nah. Nah, just because you can't get the whole Every Negro in the United States to fast, which don't mean that we can't fast with as many people as we can gather together. Oh. You know, one of the things uh, earlier, what well, it was earlier last year, the camps that came together as many as they could, they, they could mm-hmm. and they was we was uh, fasting across the board. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Soon after that, you know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff got taken care of. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff came to the forefront. Most I revealed a lot of things to him. So nothing wrong with that. We're going to run and go to Nehemiah chapter 9. 9 verse And we're going to read 1 through 3. 1 through 3. Yeah, verse 1. We'll start at verse 1. It's going to be 1 through 3. Like we said, we just touching on Showing you everybody, all our forefathers, foremothers, how they kept and how they fasted also. Now remember in Nehemiah, where were we coming from? Where were we coming from? When we pick it up and we was coming from a captivity uh, of the Syrians, I believe. Syrians. When we pick it up in Nehemiah chapter nine. So let's pick it up. And we're gonna read one, two, and three. I right, Nehemiah chapter nine, y'all. Yes, sir. Now in the 20 and fourth day of this month, mm-hmm. the children of Israel were assembled with fasting and with sackcloth and earth upon them. And the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers. Oh, that's a good shot right there. Oh. Right. We ain't even got on one like that, good shot. Mm-hmm. And the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. Because hand, so hand be joined in hand. Right? They go get theirs. So when they come to repenting, man, you better get them away from you. Get them away from them. Uh-uh. Why would you want to be joined with the heathens? They don't have repentance. Mm. They repent is done on a whole nother level. Let Christ deal with them. We know how to do it with, well, amongst each other. We come together. No heathens in the midst of us. No strangers. Confess our sins. Very important. And it's another and thing. the iniquities of our father. Yeah, so we so also now we got now we got we getting closer to Christ. We're afflicting our souls. So we need to be confessing our sins. Yeah. I just want to touch, Pray. and they say, and, and, and earth upon them. What does that mean, earth upon them? Which I think. They say that they assemble with fasting, sackcloth, and earth upon them. They probably they smeared dirt. dirt on them, made themselves lowly, dirty. You know, made the outside look like the inside. Because when you're at that point, you know you, you dirty. Basically telling them we are nothing. Nothing. We need you. Yeah, filthy we are rags. filthy to you. We need All right. You. All right. Verse, verse three, three y'all. Okay. And they stood up in their place and read in the book of the law of the Lord of their God. Which book is that? Nope. What's the book of Moses? What's the book of the law? Though? There we go. One fourth part of the day and another fourth part they confessed and worshiped the Lord their God. So for six hours? No. Three hours? No. For the fourth part. For the fourth part of the day. Oh, that's three hours, huh? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's three hours. They studied for three hours, confess for three hours. Mm -hmm. Right? They was hitting them scriptures. Probably showing just like we show them, man. Look, we got to fast. Hey, look, we got to repent. We got to kill some animals. But I love the fact that the you book right. of the law, the five first five books, right? Oh, it's the first five books. I thought it was just the um, Leviticus, huh? Because yeah. you remember, you got law out through uh, Deuteronomy, Genesis, Deuteronomy, Genesis yeah. Yeah. Leviticus, yeah. Numbers, yeah. and Deuteronomy. All, all, all five. You could just say the Torah. The, I always say the Torah. The Torah. Right? Yeah. yeah. The Torah is the first the five books. That's the law. Yeah. I always say. And then it say, and it's another thing that we, we need to pay attention to, family. They confess their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. So they repented and they confessed. Man, I know what our fathers was doing. What's some of the sins our fathers was doing? Somebody give me one. Worshiping a bull. Worshiping a cow. Give me another one. Who else got one? Some of the sins our forefathers was doing. I just Sacrificing their children to the Sleeping with the wives, the father's wives. There you go. I'd say passing their uh, children through Moloch. Passing, passing the, the children the through the fire. fire. <laughs> All these things, abomination. Mm -hmm. Right? Some of our forefathers eat pork. Put it out there. Mm -hmm. Marriage, strange women. But there you go. Being gay. Mm -hmm. Being gay. Yeah. So these are the things. So when they went into repentance, they did it for themselves, but they also confessed. We know what our forefathers did. Because that's truly what a generation of curse is, passing the spirits down. You pass the same bad habits down to your kids. The same spirits walk on down to your children. And that's some of the noticeable sins that they was doing. You can't even, you got to think about it. Look at all the other stuff he told them not to do what they was doing. They probably stealing people animals and stuff like that, keeping yeah. people animals and things like that, stealing land when that person come back, not whoring. letting them redeem their land, whoring and stuff like Whore, that. Whoring, 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 whoring. Yeah. Didn't we have rape going on? Everything rape probably was going on. I, I, I guarantee you rape was going on because you kill a rapist. We killed him. You got caught doing that, you a dead man. And the woman hold no sense for it. So, you, But you kill that guy. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, but these are the things that they, they, they were going on. What's good for you right now? Um, nothing new up under the sun. There's nothing new. Nothing new under the sun. Basically, yeah, bro. I'm good. I got John. We did. We done. We got first John five and fourteen and fifteen, and that's about it. All right, we're gonna go to our last scripture. Going to be first John five fourteen through fifteen. First John chapter five. That's going to be First John, New Testament. Um, first John, not regular John, not Saint John, but First John, close to Revelation. While we get to it, I just want to say verse five. Does five. it seem hard? Yeah, verse, chapter five, verse um fourteen. Does this seem hard to fast? Like they say, things that, that we had to do back in the day, it was hard. You know, it's not hard to go sit down and pray and prepare yourself. It's not hard to fast and everything, man. I don't know what's up with them. They say things, you know, I find out these people, they'll tell you stuff hard that they never tried to do. They never done before. Yeah. You that person? Thank you for being a big person, sis, in the movie. Yes, to this oh, so I won't even attend five. Mm -hmm. You're counting? Uh, John, I think it's, uh, I think it's like your 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 economy. Your economy? I see any. I thought it was Yakahana. Like Yakahana, yeah. yeah. something like that. Yeah. Oh. What you think it is, huh? I don't know. Let's look it up. Because John. Uh, Jacob, if you're cold, but I think John got, a, got extra on it. Let's see if we can find it real quick. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. So this, this last verse we're going to bring out. This is the one thing you, you, you should be asking for with your friend. Because, because, I'm going to bring it out. 
Now look, it's it's John. John. Here go right here. Oh, John, how you pronounce? Your Conan. Your Conan. Your Conan. Your Conan. Yeah, yeah. Your Conan. It's Y O C H A N A N. That's how you say the word John. Yeah, it's like it's like it's not. It's like Yakinon or something like that. I, oh, have yeah, I think it's like Yakinon. Like oh, okay. the way you say John in Hebrew. You know us in this. this Yakinon? Yeah. Yakinon? Yeah. It's like Yakinon or something like that. Yakinon. Yeah. Yakinon. Yeah. So. Now, to anybody that maybe he was just asking, how do you say John in the, in the Hebrew tongue? But it's like Yakinon. 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 All right. All right. You go to that verse. First John 5 and 14. Well, I'm going to start at 13, y'all. And this is an acts according to Yah will. And that's first John, correct? Yeah, first John 5. I'm going to start at verse 13 through 15. Everybody ready? All right, verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, mm -hmm. and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him. This is the what that we have in him? Confidence. confidence. That he's going to do what? Save, Save us and also do Whatever he, that whatever he say he gonna do, that's the confidence, all right? And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, mm -hmm. he heareth us. According to his will. And what will is that? The will of God. God. So if you ask for wicked things, you can't expect him to do it for you. Cause we have people that, that pray for wicked things, yeah. you know? Man, she took my, she took, she stole my boyfriend. I hope she died. Can you kill her, Lord? Man, what, what kind of stuff is that? that? Man, they got people that ask for things like this, though. I just seen a woman just saying she was gonna tell Jesus Christ to kill Zabak up on the street teaching because she was she was um following the um yeah she caught the cursing. She she was chasing after this white man and stuff. So Zabak told her, "You gonna die with this man and stuff." She got turned around and say, no, I, I'm gonna tell Jesus Christ to kill you tonight. When you go home, I plead, plead it over you. When you die, I say, oh man, she finna go. She go. And then her sons, her sons were small. They started trying to talk to him and stuff. You know, I could see it in his eyes. He was like, man, I know you grab your little butt up. And... Oh, yeah, I, you seen that one in it? Yeah, I was like, oh man, I wanted to grab their little butts up and whip them fun. Yeah. Hey, I don't come in no prophet like that. And she with a white man. And he faded off in the back while she he, she was talking and stuff and some was yeah, arguing with her. But when she left, when he left, when she left, he went ran behind her and stuff like that. Nah, they was for a black dude. She was she was being the bed winch in that situation. Yeah, yeah, taking up for him. Yeah. All right, you want me to keep going on? Verse 15. Verse 15. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask. We know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. And that's having faith, y'all. That's having a lot of faith. Definitely. When you ask, you let it go. Because you know he, hear, he heard you. You see what I'm saying? So that's where it come up with the vain prayers too. You know, I think that's what Not you only that. Man. Remember what you were saying about the praying after you said once and stuff, you, yeah. you figured, yeah, but I mean, in certain situations, it could be like that. Hey, can I say something? Just like when we pray now and somehow, you know he'll do it. That's mm -hmm. how we know, because we pray and we know. Mm -hmm. And that's why our confidence come in, that he's going to do what he say he's going to do. True. Definitely, definitely true. Yes, sir. All right. So when it came... You didn't have any more scriptures, correct? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. If anybody else had any they wanted to bring out about fasting, that's, yeah, that's free edification, we don't mind. Does anybody have any scriptures about fasting that we may have missed or that you had a question about? Like I said, just for edification purposes. Mm -hmm. 
Because some people don't, some people didn't really know how to fast. I didn't know how to fast at first. No. I didn't know what you were supposed to do and what you weren't supposed to do when fasting and everything. And like I say, like all the people that's around right now, they going out and they fasting right now, but they don't know that they're not supposed to tell. So you got you got people that saying, you got pastors that saying, hey, let's fast, but you're not telling your congregation how to fast. So all you doing is saying, hey, y'all, let's fast. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. And don't drink this and stop doing your favorite thing. But that's it. You know, yeah, you don't even tell them the purpose, they don't even know it, you know. Yeah, mm. they got fasting for things, they fasting to get some more money in their pocket. But you know, oh. I paid my tithes, Lord. I'm fasting for some, for some more um, money to give me because I paid my tithes again this week, you oh, know. Yeah, I paid my tithes, and that was my last little I bit. I cannot believe these people <laughs> are fasting for Joe Biden. I can't believe it, and Kamala Harris. I just can't, I can't fathom it. Right, okay, so nobody have any scriptures about fasting. Do anybody have any questions that they need answered? Does anybody have any questions that they need answered? Right. Did everybody get edified all right about fasting? Yeah, do everybody understand? Everybody understand? Last week we did prayer. This week we did fasting. Understand when you fast, when you fast, and I do want to make this point now I think about it. When you fast, the fast is to sanctify, clean, and like purify yourself. So then while you're praying, you're praying from a clean vessel. Mm. Okay? So that makes that prayer what? More... Where does the verses say the prayers of the uh, the righteous are very much? I don't know. I can find that. Hold on. Say it again. The prayers of the righteous are very much. Hold on. Is James five and six real quick? It's James 5, 16. Let me share this thing. Hey, close this. Hold up. We got your one on there. You got it. You, you forgot to put your one on there. Let's <laughs> go to James 5. Uh, 5 and 16, bro. Yes, sir. All right, I'm there. Hold on, let me get there. James five sixteen. All right, James five and sixteen. Confess your faults one to another. Hold on, now. okay, my bad. No, I just want to point something out because we read we read before about the confessing of sin, and I want to make something very very clear. It's okay to confess your faults to a brother or sister. First and foremost, don't go to a brother and sister that you know run their mouth. Because we know gossiping is sinful. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't be telling people sins to everybody that pass by. If somebody trusted you enough to, to uh, entrust your, they sin and confess to you, first and foremost, that's a blessing. And it's, yeah. it's and they must have saw something righteous about you. Amen. Don't go and throw away that right. by going running, and be a tattletale and tell people business. Right, right. And the worst thing about it is you don't have to answer to the Lord for that. And, and I think that's that's one of that's that's something terrible. For somebody to come and admit something to you, try to get you to help them, and then you go run your mouth. All right. Yeah, that's that's for, that's for real. All right, so bring it out. All right. James. Five and sixteen. Yes, sir. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth oh, much. Much. So if you didn't pray and fast and everything. That's what Christ was trying to tell them when they couldn't get them uh, spirits out. I think it was a young boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he yeah. told him, "Man, I keep." 
Some spirits go out by fasting and praying. You should have pulled that scripture. Yeah, you so right. Hey, and that'll be the last one. I want to show y'all that scripture because it ain't it ain't no joke. Even the people that was closer to Christ, they had trouble running uh, running um, spirits so away from. Right. And they were standing right there. Come on. The spirit was too mighty. Come on. One second, family. Mm. Matthew 17. Let's go to Matthew 17. It's our last scripture, family. Matthew uh, 17. Mm. Matthew 17. I think this is it. Let's take a quick gander. We're going to start at, um, we're going to start Matthew 17. Let's start at 17. We'll start Matthew 17, verse 17. All right, Matthew 17. I mean, yeah, Matthew 17, verse 17, y'all. Then Yahweh shot answered and said, O oh, faithless, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Yahweh shall rebuke the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. One second, I. Do you understand how Christ started the conversation? He didn't say, oh, faithful generation. Oh, faithless and pervert. Mm -hmm. Because you can't expect to go remove spirits, from, spirits off of other people when you perverse. And you faithless. So we know that the disciples, they wasn't all the way there. And we know for a fact they wasn't all the way there. Because after Christ died, they say when Peter's shadow would run across you, any spirit in you would get out of you. Mm. So we know he had a journey to walk. And he walked it. Mm. When your shadow healed people, and you got all these people talking about come get this miracle ward and these handkerchiefs and that, but y'all never go to the ICUs and these children hospitals for these cancer patients? I know y'all lying. Uh -huh. Because if I can heal people by touching them, I, man, I, the pharmaceutical department would be out of business. Because I just sit in front of the hospital on the sidewalk with a sign say, let me touch you. Oh, dude, look at my shadow. <laughs> <laughs> let me touch you. Catch me with the hey, sun up. Tell you, get the most highest praise, get out the way. Somebody else coming. They want you to buy this and buy that so they can heal you. Come on, man. These people are faithless. If you if you truly believe in the Lord, you can heal yourself with your own faith mm. by just simply trusting in him. Mm -hmm. Faith is there, I keep reading. The law cures all diseases. Yeah, it's all right, verse 19. Uh-huh. Oh no, verse verse 18. Excuse yeah, me. yes, sir. And Yahweh shall rebuke the devil. And he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Yeah, I did read it. Verse 19. Then came the disciples to Yahweh Shah apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And they say Jesus, uh, they came to Jesus apart, meaning when they caught him when he was by himself. And they didn't want to ask him in front of the crowd. They knew the yeah, so when they come to him, when he going in the house or something, here they come. Mm -hmm. Why could we not cast him out? Right, verse 20. And Yahweh Shah said unto them, uh -huh. because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder, to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Exactly. Ah. You should better tell him. He didn't did he say grab the mountain, pick it up, and throw it? Man, he say if you tell this so they let you know. If Christ walk on the earth and he say, you know what, I want to walk clean through here, and he run into a mountain, he could just tell the mountain, hey, man, you might want to get out my way. Mm -hmm. The mountain going to get up and get out of his way. 
But the crazy thing is, he telling you, you have this power. He's yeah. not talking about his his glory. So that means, because he's way more powerful than us, but you can do it. And then all he says you have to have is a grain of a mustard seed. So compared to his faith, he got you. know he All you need is a yeah. little bit, and you can do the same thing I do. Because his faith, his faith in his father is unshakable. So. He won't blow by the wind. The devil tried him. The devil came and tried to shake him. Every time the devil said something, he hit him with what? Did he hit him with opinions or did he hit him with facts? He hit him with the shake the devil. He hit him with the scripture, the facts. It is written. It is written. Read the last one. I shake, shake, shake. All right, verse 21. How be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. And I want to point this out. This is going to be our last scripture tonight. But I want to let everybody know something. If you're going through something and you're having a, a hard time getting through it and you've been praying and praying, it's time to go to the next level. It's Fast. time to start fasting. Start fasting. Fast. Think you're a good fast. Do what you got to do. And in that fast, don't cheat because you're not cheating us. And the Lord don't miss. So you can't sit here and say, oh, I'm do this good fast. And then you cheat because you don't fast to us. You fast to the Lord. Get the verse where you say when you make a vow to him. You know. Another verse. We can't, you cannot. The last scripture just brought and, uh, out, um, Oh, yeah. Matthew um, 17, 17 through 21. And uh, we. 17. We're going to have to. Uh, Add that I just brought a good point. What do you say? You can't fast on the Sabbath. You show right. We cannot fast on the Sabbath. Yeah. The yeah. Sabbath is already set apart to get close to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So we don't fast on Sabbath. You cannot mm -hmm. fast on the Sabbath. Yeah. Uh, good, good, good point. Thank you. We didn't, we didn't bring it out. Huh? That's my point. Mm -hmm. uh, what's what you asking? When you make a vow to the Lord, when you uh -huh. vow, vow. You know, you got to hold on to it. Yeah, it's better not to violate if you don't violate it. Violate. That's like fasting. You about me making a vow when you fast. Right. I'm going to get this up for you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And he's like, all right, I'm going to take your word for it, and I'm going to bless you. For it. You know? Like you tell mama, mama, I'm going to wash the dishes tonight. All right, you wash the dishes. I'm going to bless you with about $5 some more. When you come back, oh, the dishes ain't washed? Oh, I'm going to whip your butt anyway. Well, mama, you ain't give me the $5? Yeah, but you're supposed to wash the dishes. I'm whipping your butt. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah you look, know. I think it's a quick there for you, five, four. Let me pull it up real quick. Man, what that is, that barbecue again? Ecclesiastes 5 is going five. down. If y'all don't want to have to, uh, I'm going to put it on the screen. You got it? I'm going to put it on the screen. <laughs> but y'all can just jot it down. Uh, he wanted Ecclesiastes, I believe it's 5 and 4. Ecclesiastes 5 and 4. Yeah, this is it. This is it, y'all. Ecclesiastes 5 and 4. And this goes along with fasting. We bring this out because when you fast, you dang, you, I'm, excuse me. When you fast, you are making a vow to the Lord because you're going to let some things go and you're going to afflict yourself and afflict your soul. Right. And you're giving that to the Lord. So this is a vow you're making at this time. All right, here we go. Ecclesiastes 5 and 4. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he had no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better, it, better is it that thou shouldest not vow than, thou, than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. So you got to understand when you when you making a, a vow to the, to the Lord, he going to give you something. But he need his money for it. Not physical money is whatever you okay. vowed is your payment. So if you tell him, all right, let's say you are you are you are you are you a whore monger. You say, well, now nah, let's go to something else. Let's say you are a gambler or something like that. Let's say you you let her go to the casino. There's nothing wrong with gambling and stuff like that, unless you don't take it too far. But let's say you're a gambler. This is your favorite thing to do. Hey Lord, I'm gonna stop for a week from gambling, just so such and such could happen. Well, during this this process, let's say Wednesday come and you say forget it, I'm going to the um, casino. to the casino. Well, you done just avoided that whole, you know, your whole vow. Now he after you now about that, you know. Read verse six. Huh? All right, verse six. 
Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it, it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands? See, that's that trying to go back and renege. Oh, no, 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 no. No, he not trying to hear that. I didn't mean to say that. I said it the wrong way. Nah, you knew what you You made saying. a vow yeah. and you, because you make a vow and you intentionally want to go and break it. That's just be plain and simple with you. All right. So that's uh does anybody have um stop showing me make it does anybody have any questions before we pray out? Anybody in here have any questions? All right. 